none of this has been done before. Mm -hmm. There is no decentralized governance framework. Mm -hmm. There is no operating system for financial institutions, for regulators, for governments, from even organizations. Mm -hmm. There is no decentralization framework out there. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Cardano, we're not just talking about projects and tokens, we're talking it as a technology stack for the world. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Fareed here, joined by Amar, I believe, coming in from the Cardano Foundation, Emergo, and IOG. Amar, it. what are you guys doing here? Uh, so basically, as you know, we are three founding entities, mm. Cardano Foundation, Emergo, IO. When we talk about next phase of Cardano, mm. we're talking about decentralized governance, mm. right? And when we are talking decentralization, we want everybody to be part of it, right? So next step in natural evolution of mm. decentralized governance will be off-chain governance mm -hmm. and on-chain governance. On-chain governance is 1694, that people will know. Off-chain governance is a member-based organization called Intersect, that you can see there. Mm -hmm. So we are inviting anybody here at the conference or at home to basically go to the website intersectmbo.org, mm -hmm. scan QR code, become members for free mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, you'll get a label as founding member. Mm -hmm. Anything related to Cardano maintenance, Cardano continuity, you become part of it. Anybody can raise a proposal, community votes on it. Uh, you can ask for grants. Mm -hmm. If there's a gap in the Cardano ecosystem, mm -hmm. any service provider can say, I'll build this, and community will vote. Treasury management will happen through that. Wow. So true decentralization and true evolution of decentralization will happen through that, yeah. Thank you for that amazing summary. Now, as you're speaking about governance, you mentioned SIP number 1694, but there's also the recent release of, I believe, what is called the Sancho Net. Yes. So does the Sancho Net play any portion into all of this right now? It does. So when we are talking about the true decentralization, right, mm -hmm. the on-chain part, mm -hmm. the maintenance of Cardano, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere down the line, there'll be hard fork. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about hard fork, you cannot just hard fork mainnet. <laughs> you first have to go to Sancho Net, all the developer tools have to be migrated there, then you go to DevNet, TestNet, and then you do the mainnet. So SancherNet is the first place where all these tools will come, mm -hmm. all the testings will happen, all the developers will come, mm -hmm. and they will start testing the SIP1694 as well. Mm -hmm. Because this voting, somebody has to make sure that we do this in the right manner. Imagine something breaks on the mainnet and somebody drains the treasury. That would be catastrophic. Right. So SancherNet is a bridge between everything else, and that's where all of this is discussed and happens. Yeah? Gotcha. There's a demo actually mm -hmm. happening here uh, at 11. Sam from IOG mm -hmm. or IOHK is giving a demo of SancherNet. Uh, we are inviting people to see that. I think it will be recorded so everybody can see it online as well. I will make sure to go ahead and share that here with my viewers if we're not able to get it live. But that's really interesting that, you know, as you just mentioned, we're now evolving, right? Real Where time. Cardano or the Cardano Foundation, IOG, Mergo, they kind of held our hands early on, you know, giving us the, the guiding pathway but we're now evolving to where they're now letting go and letting the community kind of take over. So with that, what, what is kind of the most exciting thing that you're looking forward to with decentralized governance? And then what are you guys doing to make sure that none of this gets taken advantage of on the other spectrum? So firstly, we have to realize that none of this has been done before. Mm -hmm. There is no decentralized governance framework. Mm -hmm. There's no operating system for financial institutions, for regulators, for governments, from even organizations. Mm -hmm. There is no decentralization framework out there. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Cardano, we're not just talking about projects and tokens. We're talking it as a technology stack for the world. And it's bigger than anybody else. So that's what excites me, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how can it not be taken advantage of? So till now, we have a philosophy of, we elect somebody and we say, don't be evil. So from don't be evil, we want to move to a philosophy of can't be evil. Even if somebody wants, they can't because code is law. And a constitution will be written, that will be a set of code. People can veto and change constitutional committees. Uh, it's been designed at a very, very, very uh, thoughtful level. Mm -hmm. There are leaders from who have drafted constitutions, legal experts who are working on it. Uh, there are tech people who are racking up their brains to figure out you know, how this works. It's very, very exciting. I think it's job of the three founding entities to make sure to hand it over to masses. And uh, I'm not looking at two years from now. I'm looking at 10, 20, 30 years from now, because that's 
what blockchain, that's what decentralized frameworks are meant to do. Have a generational change, not just short-term change. Yep. That is so true, and I think for me, understanding how early we are when it comes to respect of Cardano, you know, we're, we're early adopters, and as I mentioned, everything has kind of been laid out for us, the foundation, but the community is really going to have to step up and take responsibility and take full ownership of all of this, right, to where in the future, 10, 20, 30 years from now, you can't look back and say, we're, we're not happy with what, with what is, because the community is what would have made it that at that point, you know? 100%, so this is like democracy in time of Greek or Socrates and what mm -hmm. have you. Uh, I would have loved to be part of that, where I can make a decision, I can propose anything, democracy in the true sense of the word. Mm -hmm. When we talk about democracy at level of organizations, mm -hmm. or at level of projects, mm -hmm. uh, or at level of technologies, mm -hmm. we don't have it. Right. Biggest technological frameworks are governed by siloed entities, be it Microsoft, Googles, Apples. Not that they're doing bad work, just that they didn't have the opportunity to have an infrastructure that will help them do that. We are just building that infrastructure. And as I said, if we do it right, it's going to be a generational change. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave the links to, it's the Intersect website? Intersectmbo.org, yes, it's the Intersect website. I will leave that down below for you guys. If you guys are looking to become founding members and guiding hands with respect to the Cardano governance here. Amar, I want to thank you so much. And let's close out here just on a light softball question. Sure. You know, what, what has been most exciting for you here as a part of Rare Evo? Oh, <laughs> it's hard to pick one thing. <laughs> uh, one exciting thing is to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll take that. So let's close it on that note. Perfect. That's Ladies exciting. and gentlemen, Amar, thank you so much again for the My kind pleasure. words. Yeah. I look forward to catching up with you again. Thank let's you again that. for the information. Thank you.